Okay, those of you who are watching this, stand up and try this along with me. Think about how you walk. What part of your body starts the walking motion? When I ask this to classes or to individuals, I get a whole variety of responses. Some people say it's the foot. The foot lifts up and starts moving to walk. Some people say it's the knee, that that lifts the lower part of the leg and that lifts up and starts us walking. Some people say it's our hips or our legs. So try that. Lift your leg up with whatever part you feel and put it out and put it forward on the floor and then move your body forward. And try walking this way. It's quite entertaining and somewhat uncomfortable and most of us don't actually walk that way. When we actually walk, the motion actually starts from our torso, our upper body, which is where most of our body weight or body mass is. We actually put ourselves off balance, start falling forward in a way, and our legs then automatically come out to catch us, and our weight shifts from foot to foot that way. So you can feel yourself actually walking by shifting your balance smoothly forward or backward if you walk backwards. There are a number of things of things in cello playing that are very similar to walking. We want to have the same fluidity of motion. We also want to use the same type of uh, balance and use of our body weight shifting from one place to the other. One of those is bowing. For example, with your bow arm, if you put your arm up here, you're suspending your weight with your shoulder and your arm. If you release that weight, it will swing back sideways. So essentially, you're sort of putting yourself off balance in a way by holding your arm up and then releasing it and letting it fall. If you do that with the toe, which you create all of the motions of your bow. So if you put your arm out, you can feel yourself suspending or holding it up. You can release that all, and your arm will fall back naturally to where the front. It's the same here at the front. It's almost like as if you hold your arm out this side, but you're putting yourself off balance this way, and then let it release, and let the balance shift back to a neutral position. <laughs> so on the down bow here, you could release, and fall out away from your arm side. When I do this, I also like to incorporate the natural weight and momentum that I can use from my torso and my upper body. So if I'm on an up bow, I often will actually put my body off balance in the opposite direction. Both when I release and go back to a neutral balance point, both my body and my arm will fall in opposite directions back to the center point. From the down bow, I often move the other way, often sort of almost shifting to this side of the hip, and then both fall away. So when you do that with the toe, you can slightly shift this way, in your body, bring yourself off balance with both your arm and your body. And you nicely, evenly have a nice full blow. And you're also then slightly off balance to release and go back. This counter-motion between the body and the arm can help give you a lot more uh, power and ease of sound production and also is very freeing creates a lot of fluidity in the body that can help avoid the usual <laughs> tensions that can be simply by pulling and pushing our arm back and forth. Something else with that that is, I find very helpful to feel is that when I release and let my arm fall, I can feel that it is sort of hanging or pulling against the skin. Right. Not that I'm pushing into the string with my muscles, but that I'm hanging and that's pulling against the string, or in this case, sort of leaning, like I'm leaning against some object. In doing that and having that particular feeling, I can play very close to the edge, using all of my body weight and my arm weight without any squeezing or pressure. Or is in our left hand. 
like we did with the walking when we put our foot out and stepped first without shifting our balance, many people have a tendency, and it's easy to do, to play from the fingers by pushing the finger down each subsequent feeling, each subsequent finger. Instead of that, we can let the weight of our arm balance, just like we're walking, shift forward, and that will naturally put the finger down on its own. And shift forward again, or shift back, just like when we're walking. Our body weight shifts from foot to foot. Here we can have the weight of our arm and shoulder shifting from finger to finger, rather than pushing down from the hand or the finger joint. When you vibrate, on a particular note, to have the best vibrato and the most ease of motion, we want to have the weight of the arm centered on that particular finger that we're playing on. If we don't get used to shifting the weight from finger to finger and using that in a natural position, we often end up with something that is based on finger pressure or is off balance in some way that doesn't create a nice vibrato that we can have when everything is balanced over that particular finger. One more thing in which you can use this is shifting. Just like with the bow arm that we talked about earlier, how you can put yourself off balance and fall to create a bow stroke, you can do the same thing with the shift, except this way it's this direction rather than out, away from your body. There are a variety of ways of putting yourself slightly off balance with your arm. One is lifting up slightly and then letting that fall back to a natural position. When you're up here, you're already up. You can simply let the weight of your elbow sort of fall and pull you back down the string. Another way is to actually create a bounce thing feeling in your back where you bounce down and that gives you the momentum that starts that motion balancing you up to a higher place or balancing you back to the lower place. So when you shift, you're actually shifting the weight of your arm and using that natural weight to fall forward or back to a balanced position on the next finger or the next position that you're going to be in. <laughs>